We have no idea what the mark of Cain was. We don't know. So in Genesis 4.15, we have the mark of Cain. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And you will hear apologists, uh, popular teachers out there, say that no one knows what the mark of Cain was. Anything you've ever heard, any teaching you've ever heard about the mark of Cain is simply speculation. It may be interesting, it may be fascinating, and it's fine to speculate because it's in the Bible. But all we have is speculation and nothing more. But the problem is we do know what it was. It was a clan mark. And Skinner talks about this in his commentary. On page 109, Skinner says this. Everyone that findeth me, etc. The object of Cain's dread is hardly the vengeance of the slain man's kinsmen, so nearly all commentators. And he's referring there to Genesis 5-4, where we see that Adam had other sons and daughters. But rather the lawless state of things in the desert where anyone's life may be taken with impunity. That the words imply a diffusion of the human race is an incongruity on either view and is one of the many indications that the Cain of the original story was not the son of the first man. Wow. Yeah. He's saying that you can tell, and he's got, you know, his view of Genesis, how it came together is a little different than mine, but he's saying that this story in its original form this Cain was not the son of the first man. <laughs> that's, right. about, that's about as uh, pointed as you can get there. The incongruity. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a really good comment there, though, from Skinner. I'll include that in the video. What follows must be understood as a divinely appointed amelioration of Cain's lot. Although he is not restored to the amenities of civilized life, Yahweh grants him a special protection suited to his vagrant existence against indiscriminate homicide. Whoso kills Cain, or whenever anyone kills Cain, it, the murder, shall be avenged sevenfold by the slaughter of seven members of the murderer's clan. Appointed a sign for Cain. Set a mark on Cain. The former is the more obvious rendering of the words, but the latter has analogies and is demanded by the context. Since the sign is to serve as a warning to all and sundry who might attempt the life of Cain, it is obvious that the second view alone meets the requirements of the case. So it was a visible mark that meant his murder will be avenged sevenfold. Other people knew this, and it was the people around Eden that would have known this the people of the world, mankind. In the ancient world, though, there were clan marks that you would wear and you would have safety out in the wild. People wouldn't attack you because they knew there was a clan behind you. So maybe God made up some kind of Edenic clan mark. I don't know. And he's not worried about his parents here. And he doesn't have siblings yet at this point in the narrative. I know young earth creationists bring that up, and maybe he does. It's possible he does, but he's not worried about them either. He's worried about other people that are in the region. And there were other Canaanites in Canaan 
all throughout this period in Jericho there were people living Jericho was a settled thriving city at the time the Garden of Eden existed and the same is true with Megiddo to the north and Damascus is an 8,000 year old city so there's these places around that you know there were people around the Edenic people were not the only people in Canaan at this time and um, so that's who Cain was worried about though there were other people outside the garden and outside their area there that would kill him and uh, I don't know this Genesis 4 14 has to be probably the 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 clearest proof text for the pre-adamite view altogether right there it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me i know that um what you just read there um is uh it is definitely a really good argument for more of the pre-adamite um uh theology just because it just seems so weird to put a mark on his head and to be a for Cain, well, first off, to be afraid of, um, I don't know, afraid of being killed. Everybody will seek me out um, to kill me. And like you said, it's a possibility. It could be like Adam and Eve and his siblings, I guess. It just doesn't really fit very well. No. I, it just doesn't. I mean, no. It, it really, I think that, I mean, this is probably one of the big, big problems with the young earth um, Adam and Eve first man and woman view is just what it just seems so yeah it just the, the purpose of receiving the mark and Cain mentioning that you know that people will seek him to try to kill him well why would I mean when if if any man or woman is trying to I, and I guess man really is trying to seek out and kill Cain why does it just doesn't seem weird for I, maybe I don't know if I'm getting saying the right thing here, but it just seems so weird to like, why would a man, if it's, if Adam and Eve and siblings are the only ones alive, why do they have to go find and kill Cain? Yeah. They, know, they already know where he is. Yeah. And yeah. And the mark and everything, just everything about it falls totally into favor with the pre animite view, everything about it. The Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And this word land, the land of Nod, that is Eretz, Eretz Nod. And since it's not Eden, he says, land of Nod. And if he said Eden everywhere, like in verse 412, a fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the land of Eden. Well, why would he say that to Cain? See, it's Cain's homeland. You know, it's his hometown. You see? <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, it's a, if, if we're really focusing on what God's trying to communicate, he doesn't need to tell Cain that you're banned out of the land of Eden. Like, well, well, why would it's if he if God said that, it's almost like he's trying to, I don't know, keep the reader in mind. But why would he talk about a reader? He's talking to Cain. Yeah. And Cain knows what he's talking about. He's banned from the land, the place. Yeah. Um, I, I totally agree. It's, it's it, in that understand from that perspective, we think well, what. For, from our perspective, we kind of wish he said that, but it would make no sense for God to say that because he got his yeah. point off perfectly to Cain because that's who he was talking to. Yeah. Yep. But right here in Genesis 4.16, the land of Nod, that's terribly important for understanding how Eretz is used in the historical narrative sections 
in Genesis. Genesis 2, 3, and 4, and then 6, 7, 8, 9, and 11. In those chapters, the historical narrative, Eretz is a region. It's not planet Earth. It's the region of Eden. And if it's a region other than Eden, then it is specified, like Eretz Nod and Eretz Shinar which is where the Tower of Babel was built in chapter 11. So you have, and in chapter 2, where it's talking the four rivers, it talks, it gives some different Eretzes. Eretz Cush, I think. Eretz Ethiopia. So those are specified, but every other time in the historical narrative, Eretz, the land, it's the land of Eden. And that is essential for people to grasp as we get into the flood narrative because the flood the water is going to cover the whole land but it's not a global planetary flood and it's so important for people to understand today with scientific challenges and things absolutely didn't um didn't we talk about before that like at the at the end of verse sixteen that like when Cain went to dwell in the land of Nod east of Eden it really actually refers to like isn't it kind of backwards like it's really like more of like the place was west of like am I am I on the wrong wrong track of something isn't it like that that phrase like read a little differently. East of Eden. Oh no, that is the verse about them after they leave the ark, it says, and they journeyed east to a plain in the land of Shinar. It's a different verse. Okay. And in the King James it mistranslates it, yeah. Um it, it says, and they traveled from the east, I think it says in the King James, and that's wrong. It means they traveled eastward in an eastward direction. Yeah, um, that's a different verse there. But this is important, east of Eden in Genesis 4.16. That is more temple symbolism. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. You always approach God from the east, moving west. You approach God that way. And so as God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden and put cherubim in, at the east of the garden to keep the way. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. They were being pushed out of the holy place into just the land of Eden, you know. And then now here... Cain is getting pushed even further out of the land of Eden. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And he goes east to the land of Nod. And I would say he crosses the Jordan and ventures into the land of Nod. And it, the word Nod there just means wandering. And I think Moses, when he wrote this, it could be that Nod was a legitimate name of a region that Moses referred to. And it could be. Or it could be that it just means wandering, a wander, a place of wandering and the unknown, really. But it was the area where 
Moses and the Israelites were doing their wandering around, you know. So I think Nod is really just more of a colorful name for the region, wandering, or kind of the unknown. It's a vague name, and it means just wandering. It could have been a true designation of a place, though. I just throw that out there because... Um, other scholars have thought that, um, you know, like Boscawin, that thought it referred to an actual place known as Nadu in Sumer. So that possibility does exist. Okay. Cool. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built it a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. You know, this first part, and Cain knew his wife. People harp about that one like, oh, that's good. That's another good proof there. But I don't think it is, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a Canaanite woman, a non-Edenic woman. I do, but um, I would never emphasize this one against a younger creationist. The the one though up there in verse fourteen though I would Cain being afraid of the people that'll kill him definitely. Yeah, that's a that's a seventeen makes a little bit more sense. I think it it just makes the passage read a little better, but fourteen though I. That's a, that's a big deal. Yeah. That's, that's tough. Yeah. But here's how I know Cain was a good guy. And people will disagree, but I, I just know he was. It says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built it a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Now, Enoch means dedicated. And I think Cain wanted his son to be the one. I think he wanted, he dedicated him to God. And I think he wanted him to be the one to restore things. I think he held out hope that God would use his son for, for that. But Enoch is a righteous name. And I just know Cain's a was a good guy, you know, that did some dumb stuff. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. The Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. This is definitely a pre-Adamite passage right here. The mark of Cain, and we know what it was. And it means there were other people the other, the, the mankind of chapter one. That's who it is. Pretty cool, man. It's not his brothers and sisters in Genesis 5-4. It's not his parents that are going to kill him. You know, when you really sit down and think of that passage, it really is a terrible problem for young earth, the young earth view. Yeah. Like, when you really sit there and think about it, like, it's it's too bad they just they just kind of like oh yeah that that is interesting, but anyways it you know it, it really is kind of a, a problem. It means you have to take chapter one more chronologically than they're taking it, and there's a mankind already around. Yeah. So no recap. No recap. <laughs> 